Harley Benton Ailes really pushes the envelope of what a 400 euro guitar can be. A semi-hollow mahogany body with a maple veneer top, roasted maple neck, stainless steel frets, glow-in-the-dark side dots, depth-tech task nut, splittable Tesla pickups and genuinely impressive finish and construction quality. I think this guitar might be both the most versatile and just overall the best guitar Harley Benton has ever built. In this video we'll talk about the pros and cons of this instrument and whether you should consider getting one for your home studio as well. But first, let's do the Catpick Studios thing and listen to this guitar in a bunch of different songs. Disclaimer, this guitar has been provided to me by Harley Benton and I get to keep it as well. But as my long-time viewers know, you still get my honest opinion whether the video is sponsored or not. But let's dive into the specs of the guitar. First of all, you're getting a semi-hollow mahogany body with a center block. There's a triple A flame maple veneer. There's a roasted maple C-shaped satin finished neck. Grover locking tuners. Graftec tusk nut. Really cool and comfortable neck joint medium jumbo stainless steel frets, glow-in-the-dark side dots, three-way pickup switch, Tesla pickups, and no, these are not Elon Musk designed, as every other YouTuber has joked as well, volume and tone with actually usable split sounds. As of shooting this video, the guitar comes in two finishes, Bengal Burst that I have over here, and a Frost Flame finish as well. As of shooting this video, the guitar is priced at 399 euros, but check your country's pricing by following the link in the description. All right, so let's break down the songs we just heard, and I'll demonstrate you how I got all the different sounds for these songs. All of the tracks were recorded going from the Harley Benton Alias into my studio pedal board, and there I was using various pedals, and from there I would go into my Rev D20. And for this kind of fake jazz riff thingy, 
I just went for the neck pickup and that's it. Added a little bit of orange compressor and I think this sounds very jazzy, if you will. Yeah, a really, really nice sound. And then for the second sound, I went to the middle pickup selection, again, keeping the compressor on and then I actually split the pickups as well and just did this. That's it. I think this is a really nice sound and you can use it for a lot of stuff. And let's hear those in the mix as well. For this kind of 80s blues funky type of thing, I actually stayed on the middle pickup position and then again split the humbuckers and I'm also using the orange compressor, but I also added the Boss DC2W for this kind of 80s chorus type of thing and I think this sounds great. <laughs> For the pop punk song, I went for the bridge humbucker, no splits or anything like that, and just the Rev G3 pedal into the Dynamis, and this just sounds right. <laughs> For this 80s hair metal track, I guess what you could call it, I went for a new pedal on my board, which is the New X Fireman, and this goes for this hot rodded British sound, and it just sounds amazing. <laughs> and then, of course, of course, I had to pair it with the DC2W again, and I just love the sound. And then for the lead sound, I actually took out the DC2W and just added a bit of mid range and gain for the solos. That's it, really. For the last song, I again had to tune to drop D, but I also used the Digitech drop to drop my guitar five semitones more, which makes it uh, whatever key I'm forgetting right now. But with the drop, it muddies up things quite a bit when you go more than like maybe like a step or step and a half down. So I'm cutting a lot of low end on the G3 pedal that I'm also using, boosting the highs, cutting some of the mids and try to go for as tight sound as possible. I also doubled that drift by going back to kind of standard tuning, if you will, basically disabling the Digitech drop and then playing that riff again in a different position on this guitar. And then for the lead line, I just bumped the gain, added some mids and added some ambience on those tracks in the post and that's it.
So what do I actually think about this guitar? First of all, I personally dislike the term super versatile, but in this case, I actually think this guitar is very versatile. It doesn't sound like a Tele or a Strat or a Les Paul for that matter, but you can use it for similar applications and get great results and some unique sounds as well. I'm genuinely surprised how much ground I could cover with this guitar without feeling that the sounds I was getting were a compromise. I personally struggled to play this guitar sitting down just a little bit because the way this cut is shaped and placed makes this guitar a little bit back heavy and I actually have to hold it with my hand so it doesn't back dive over here. Though it also might be just the shape of my thigh, which is a topic a lot of you will probably want to discuss for a long time, right? I also noticed that at no point during the recording sessions I was thinking about the build quality or the hardware of this guitar. The Tesla pickups work really well and the overall build quality is such that it allowed me to focus on creating music, which is obviously the most important thing. As with all budget friendly guitars, I have to mention that the guitar I have might have gone through the quality control, but the one you receive might have not. And that's how they save money. And that's the risk we have to take when we are ordering one of these instruments. But is it a risk worth taking? I'm going to say heck yes. This guitar feels more like an 800 euro guitar, not a 400 euro guitar. Harley Benton is really pushing the envelope of what you can expect for this amount of money and that's just awesome. The only way I would like it even more is if it had a gloss black finish option, but I kind of have that guitar already. If you want to get your Harley Benton ALS, you can use the link that you can find over here. If you want to up your songwriting skills, you can check out my songwriting course over here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, there's a subscribe button for you available as well. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time.